and all those that are connected with us. We are glad to have you this morning. And right now we want to open up this service with a word of prayer. And we're going to have a good time today. Amen? Amen. We're going to lift up the name of Jesus today. Amen? Because he's truly worthy to be praised. Heavenly Father, we come thanking you right now for all of your many blessings, God. We thank you for another Sunday morning that we were able to come in this place, God, in your presence, God to lift up your name because you are truly worthy to be praised, God. If it had not been for you on our side, God, we could be lost, but praise be unto you who are the head of our life. You seem fit to push us through all trials and tribulations, God, and get us to this point to where we can come in this building and we can lift our hands and we can say thank you, God, for all of your many blessings. We can say thank you, God, for your grace and your mercy. We can say thank you, God, for just keeping peace uh, that, that surpasses all understanding, God. Now, God, as we are here, God, we pray that you bless this service, that it may be what you have it to be, God. Bless the one that's going to bring the word today, God, that he may continue to teach and preach your uncompromising gospel to your people, God, so that we may become the people that you have blessed us to be. Bless this church, that he may continue to grow, God, that he may continue to flourish, God, that we may be a driving force in this community, God. Oh, just have your way, God. Bless our pastor, Dr. Ross, his family, and all families that are present and that are online, God. We love you, God. And we praise you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of you came to give God all the honor and all the glory on today? Amen. How many of you came for no other reason but to glorify him because he is worthy of all the honor and all the glory? We ask that you would stand to your feet if you are able and get ready to glorify God with us on this morning. This song just says, Lord, we love you. Do we have any believers in the house that just love God? Amen. Because he loved us first. This song just says that we just love him. So we're just going to love on God for a little bit this morning. Amen. Come on and put your hands together with us as we get ready to love on God this morning. Hallelujah. Because we love him. Hallelujah.
Jesus, you love him more than anything.
than anything. More 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 than anything. If you really want to praise him more than anything, can we praise him in this atmosphere? Because we truly love him more than anything. There's a lot of things in this world that we can do. But praising God more than anything will pay off. Amen. More than anything. More than anything. Say more than anything. 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 More than anything, more than anything, more than anything, more than anything, more than anything. Good morning, Abundant Love Fellowship Church. Okay, one more again. Good morning, Abundant Love Fellowship Church. Okay, there it is. There it is. It is rainy outside. It is nasty outside. But how many of you know just because it looks like that out there doesn't mean it has to feel like it in here? Amen. So if you're like me, you have joy in your heart this morning. You are excited about the day, and you're more excited about the God of the day. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. I stand to just greet you and amen to recognize those that are joining us today as visitors. So if it's your first, second, third, 50, 11th time coming to Abundant Love Fellowship Church, we ask that you just stand. We won't make you speak, but we do want to love on you. Visitors, please stand. Amen. Amen. On behalf of Pastor Ross, our first lady and her, she's coming in, y'all. She's coming in. Looking all good in her green. But to our visitors on behalf of Pastor Ross and First Lady, let me just let you know from the bottom of my heart, we are so excited that you guys decided to join us this morning. We pray that you guys get a special word that encourages you, that guides you, that uplifts you for your week. Amen. Amen. Abundant love, you know how we do it. Let's show some love. God bless you. We're so excited that God led you our way this morning. All right. Now, we've recognized our visitors. We're so excited to see them. But can you please let your neighbor know you're excited to see them too? Turn to your neighbor and say, good morning. You look good. And then tell them, I know, I know. Thank you, though. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, we do have some announcements that we would like to share with you. And so we ask at this time, please direct your attention to our monitors. Good morning, Abundant, Good morning, Love. Abundant Love Fellowship Church. Today is Sunday, May the 14th, and these are your weekly announcements. Baptisms will be held on next Sunday, May the 21st, immediately following service. On Sunday, May the 28th, Abundant Love Fellowship Church will be the special guest at Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church for their pastor and wife anniversary at 3 p.m. Any youth ages 6 and up that is interested in participating in the Youth Mind presentation, please see one of the youth workers after service. New Members Orientation is held every second Sunday of each month. 
Please see Minister Adrian Halliburton or Sister Elena Mason with any questions. Discipleship classes are held every Wednesday evening at 6 p.m. in person and via Zoom link. Please contact Minister Paula Smith for details. Join us each Wednesday night for prayer at 6.30 p.m. in classroom number one. A Zoom link is available. For additional information, please contact Reverend Mary Lynn Hamilton. Wednesday night live sessions are held in person and via Facebook Live. So join us each Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Youth Bible study is available to all youth ages 3 through 17 every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Please see Minister Candace Barker with any questions. Our Sunday service is held in person and via Facebook Live. We welcome you to join us each Sunday morning at 1030 a.m. for a powerful word from God. Stay informed by following Abundant Love Fellowship Church on all of our social media platforms to receive up-to-date information. You can sow your tithes and offering via PayPal by going to www.alfwaco.com and selecting the Donate button. Or you can mail checks or money orders to P.O. Box 1547, Hewitt, Texas 76643, or via our Cash App to ALF Offering. Abundant Love, let's all welcome our newest member partners, Jamara Henry, Jantaniqua Gill, on behalf of Pastor and First Lady Ross, happy Mother's Day to all of our mothers. And these have been your weekly announcements. Have a blessed week, Abundant Love. Amen. Uh, and I would just like to give special emphasis to those youth announcements. Uh, parents, we are preparing for our uh, mom ministry for pastor's anniversary. And so if you would like your child to participate in that presentation, please see myself or any one of our youth workers. We will begin practicing on Wednesdays, and we want every youth here who wants to participate. Amen. Amen. At this time, I am going to ask the absolute best pastor on this side of heaven to please come on up. Amen. Pastor Ross. Somebody lift up a praise to God. Okay, okay, okay. Maybe I said that wrong. Everybody lift up a praise to God. Hallelujah. How many of you know he's worthy of every bit of praise that you can muster? Amen. Glory be to God. God is just an awesome God. Amen. 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 Listen, it is, it is sowing time. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. It is sowing time in the sanctuary. Somebody said, well, why do we call it sowing time? Because according to the principles of the kingdom, that when we give, we're actually sowing. Amen. Amen. So when we give, glory be to God, we are sowing into the rich ground of the kingdom. Well, why are we sowing into the rich ground of the kingdom? Because the ground is going to give back to the sower. Glory be to God. The ground is going to give back to the sower. God said this. He said, look, if you give, it will be given unto you, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Now, what does that mean? That means that as you sow the seed in the ground, seed time and harvest says that you can expect a harvest. Glory be to God. So when I give out of obedience, God, through faithfulness, will bring about a harvest in your life. Glory be to God. Listen, lean over to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I got to, I got to, I got to, I got to give, I got to give. I need God to do some stuff. I need a harvest in my life that goes past my bank account. I need a harvest in my life that goes past monetary things. I need a harvest in my life. It is not my tithe that gets me the harvest is my obedience to give the tithe that gets me the harvest. Oh, I wish I had somebody in here that would just 
show your neighbor every tooth in your mouth and say, I'm glad to do it. I'm glad to do it because God loves a cheerful. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Go ahead and prepare that seed right now. Go ahead, prepare that seed. Amen. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Prepare that seed right now. Hallelujah. Now listen, we just want to pray over it. Amen. We don't, you, you don't mind us praying over your seed. Amen. Glory be to God. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that by your spirit being faithful to your word, Father God, that you would bring about a harvest in the lives of your people. Father God, for every person that's tithing for every person that's giving father God no matter how they're giving it father I pray father God that your word will become manifest in their life father God I pray in the name of Jesus that you would open up the windows of heaven and pour them out a blessing God that they don't even have room enough to receive father God oh bountifully and plentifully father ah oh, God overwhelm their service circumstance and overwhelm the situations and father God be the God of the harvest in their life father we thank you in advance and we give you all of the praise the honor and the glory in Jesus name amen come on serve the people of God how many of y'all believe God got a blessing for it Woo! Uh-huh, uh-huh. Come on, y'all. Declare it. What you going to Come on. How many of you getting ready for it? Get ready. Get ready for your miracle.
listen, listen, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. How many know you can expect things from God? Oh, no, 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 no. Don't get churchy on me. How many of you really believe you can expect things from God? Let me tell you what you can expect. You can expect him to do what he says he's going to do. Ah, God. When God says something, you can expect it. Glory be to God. Listen, let me ask you this. How many of y'all that he said he was going to heal you and he did it? How many of y'all he said he was going to open a door and he did it? How many of y'all he said he was going to make a way and he did it? Well, tell your neighbor he's going to do it now. He's going to do it now. He's going to do it now. Why? Cause your name's on it. Your name's on it. Your name on it. With my 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 name on
Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Now, now mothers, we celebrate your uniqueness. The uniqueness of your presence in our lives, the uniqueness of your love, the uniqueness of your care. But we also today honor your endurance, your tenacity, and your never wavering love. Because you were there, we are here. Because you were there in our formative years. You were there in our crazy times and seasons. Because you were there when we needed correction, when we needed encouragement, when we needed guidance, and when we needed somebody to love us. You were there. Although you didn't give birth to all of us, you poured into all of us. You shared your wisdom with us. You share your, 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 your love with us. And our lives have been enriched because of you. So today we honor you with these words. But for the rest of our lives, we honor your legacy. Knowing that your labor is not in vain. Many women have done virtuously. But you have excelled them all. We love you, but most of all, we thank you. I need everybody to stand on your feet and let's honor these senior mothers. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We want you to remember this day. Amen. Hallelujah. We love you. Your kids love you. Your grandkids love you. Your great-great-grandkids love you. Glory be to God. We may not be in your family by blood, but we are here on purpose. And everybody in here, we just love you. Glory be to God. You're so wonderful. So very, very wonderful. And we praise God for you. Glory be to God. Y'all, can I tell y'all, y'all don't look like y'all 70. I was starting to... I start to question, wait a minute, who, who? Glory, y'all don't look like y'all 70, amen. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Sister Bogus, thank you for bringing mom today, amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. We thank God. Come on, once again, let's give these mothers a great big God bless you. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Mom. Thank you, Mom. Amen. Amen. We want you guys to know that you serve a very important role in all of our lives. And we honor you and we praise you. Amen. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now listen, how many of you are ready to go even higher in this Mother's Day celebration service? Amen? Amen. Praise be unto God. God has blessed us to have some people and he's gifted them with the gift of singing. Amen. Amen. And how many of you know when God gives you a gift? Glory be to God. Can't nobody outdo your gift. Amen. So please put your hands together and give God a great praise for the best choir this side of heaven, the Abundant Love Fellowship Choir.
I believe somebody in here needs to testify. Glory be to God. Look at your neighbor and say, there is no way, glory be to God, that I can live. Hallelujah. Listen, if that's your testimony, come on, choir, help us again. If that's your testimony, lean over to your name and tell them. sustainer of praise somebody give your baby a praise hallelujah he kept me he kept me when the devil thought he had me God kept me Woo. glory be to God I wish I had about 15 radical folk that would just go in a crazy prayer Hallelujah. Woo. Glory be to God. He kept me. He kept me. He kept me. He kept me from losing my mind. He kept me from losing my heart. He kept me from losing my faith. The Lord kept me. Woo. There is no other way. Glory be to God. Woo! I don't know about you, but if it wasn't for the Lord on my side, I would not be here. It was God that kept me. Woo! Hallelujah. Hey. Go oh, repeat it. Oh, bless your name, God. bless your name God we bless your name God with every vocal cord we bless your name with every limb we bless your name hey, God with, with the fruit of our lips we bless you glory be to God hallelujah we're not perfect but we bless your name hallelujah Still got some struggles, but we bless your name. Don't always get it right, but we bless your name. Hallelujah. Jesus. Glory to your name, God. Mm. Mm. lean over to your neighbor and say neighbor I can't give nobody else the credit hallelujah I can't I can't give nobody else the credit glory be to God what nobody but the Lord hallelujah nobody but the Lord oh bless your name God hallelujah yes God there is no way. 
I can live this life. without you. Mm. Oh, somebody, somebody, somebody giving him a praise right now. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Has he been Jehovah Rapha to anybody? Has he been Jehovah Jireh to anybody? Has he been Jehovah Rafika to anybody? Glory be to God. Mm. Yea, God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Woo. Mm. I, I, I'm sorry, y'all. I can't. I can't do. I can't do a stiff praise. I. I can't do stiff worship. I. I gotta let go in God. I. I just gotta raise my hand and open my mouth. And even if I feel like running, I can't do a stiff praise. Because when I think about His goodness, woo. Sister Lord, I, the thing I love about it is he did it anyway. Y'all, uh, y'all, y'all, maybe I'm all by myself, but Rem Parks, he did it anyway. I didn't deserve it. I didn't earn it, but he did it anyway. Glory be to God. Jesus. Mm. <laughs> oh God. Can can listen, listen, will y'all will y'all just help me for a minute? Will y'all just help me for a minute? I I just thought about another good thing he did. I, I, I my mind is just going back over my life when the devil tried to kill me, but I but I I just thought of another good thing that he did when, when oh my God, when I was trying to go to hell, he did another good thing and he got me where I am. When I was sick, he did another good thing. He's been good to me. Glory be to God. If he's been good to you, come on. He's been so good. Jesus, he's been woo. Glory be to God. You've been. Mm. So good. Glory be to God. You've been. So good. Jesus. You've been. So good. Hallelujah. You've been. So good. You've been. To me, high five your neighbor and say, Me too. Me too. Glory be to God. The word of God today is found in the book of Exodus. Glory be to God. Hey, God. Exodus chapter 2. If you're able to stand, we're going to ask you to stand for the reading of the word of the living God. Hallelujah. If you're able to stand, please stand. Whether you have a Bible or not, that's okay. That's okay. Just stand. Just stand. Glory be to God. Even if it hurts to stand, try it, try it, try it, try it. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. How many of you know he can turn your hurt <laughs> glory in you, your power glory be to God just stand for the reading of the word of God Exodus chapter 2 verse starting with verse 1 and there went a man of the house of Levi and took to wife a daughter of Levi and the woman conceived and bare a son and when she saw him, that he was a goodly child, tell your neighbor, you might not like my child. 
but I think he's a goodly child. She hid him three months. And when she could no longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes, daubed it with slime and with pitch, put the child therein, and she laid it in the flags by the river's brink. And his sister stood afar off to wit what would be done to him. I want you, mothers, I want you to look at somebody close to you and ask them, what do you do when the odds are stacked against you? I'm trying to be a good mother. I'm trying to be everything that I need to be. But what do you do when the odds are stacked against you? You may be seated in the presence of God. Uh, bless his name. Please allow me once again to wish all of our mothers today, amen, those who are alive, those that are streaming, amen, a happy Mother's Day. One of the things, and I don't say this by experience, but I say it based on observation. And one of the things I have observed of mothers in my life is that the struggles of a mother are many. When I observe my wife, when I observe my sisters, when I observe other women in my life, even my own mother, I saw some of the struggles that they had to face being a mother. And one of the struggles I observed was that of raising a child, especially raising them the way God says to raise them. Now, you can raise a child the way the therapist says. You can raise a child the way social services say. You're going to raise a child the way the school district said. But if you're going to raise them to love and not hate, if you're going to raise them to forgive and not condemn, if you're going to raise them to live godly and not ungodly, the struggle is real. And the reason why the struggle is real is because you are going against societal, societal norms. Because the societal norm is you're, raise, you're raising just another boy or girl. But God gives a mother insight in that child's life. Mothers can see what other people can't. Because God allows you to see what he made that child to be. He allows you to see the calling on that child's life. He allows you to see the purpose of that child's existence. And when you see what God shows you and what you see in the world, it's easy to calculate that the odds are against you. Because while you are pushing, the world is pulling. While you are teaching, the world is tempting. While you are correcting, the world is corrupting. The odds are stacked against you. Now, when I say odds, I mean the probability that something is more likely to happen than something else. Oh, mm, God. Genesis 3.15 says, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head and thou shall bruise his heel. It's in this verse that God proclaims as a consequence to the decision of Adam and Eve whereby the devil ushered into sin into the world. 
by placing the seed of sin into the seed of Adam. Now, because of that, God pronounced a critical conflict between the seed of the woman and the seed of the enemy, making it hard now for the mother to raise her child in a sin-dominant world. But God also said that while the enmity would be there, the seed of the woman would produce a savior that would bruise the head of the enemy. Oh, God. Uh, that seed was Jesus, and that woman was his mother, Mary. But he also told all mothers uh, that the conflict would exist between them and their children. Because the plan of the enemy is to destroy the woman and the thing she loves the most. Oh, God, I, uh, can I get three mothers to just lean over to your neighbor and say, uh, there are some things I love in this world, but I don't love nothing more than I love my children. How many of you know that a woman will hurt you? Oh, 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 come on, come on, be real. A woman will hurt you over her children. She'll get strength that you thought she never had when you mess with her child. Glory be to God. Mothers, lean over to your neighbor and say, don't mess with mine now. Don't mess with mine. Don't mess with mine. You're going to get another side of me when you mess with my child. Don't, don't mess with me. Even the devil got to be put on notice that when you mess with my child, I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you. I ain't going to sit back and let you have my child. I labor too long for this one. I suffer too much for this one. And I refuse to sit back and let you have your way. The plan of the enemy is to destroy the woman. The thing that she loves the most and because he cannot do it directly, he'll try to do it through circumstances. He'll try to do it through situations and, and he'll set up some odds against you to try to make you give up on being a mother to try to make you give up on your child and conclude that you are defeated. It's a plan that he used for a long time. It's a plan that he has had some success with because many mothers have looked at the odds against them and gave up. They looked at having to raise a child all by themselves. They looked at not having enough money. They looked at all of the things that they got to do just for them and their child to survive and the odds look insurmountable. But I want to let mothers know just because the odds are against you, that don't mean God is against you. Glory be to God because God with you is greater than the odds against you. There is nothing too hard for God. And if you place your faith in God and believe to see the miracle God has prepared for you, oh my God, bless your neighbor and say, neighbor, God is the equalizer. God can turn the odds in your favor when the enemy has stacked the odds against you because with God... You got the favor of possibility while the enemy can only deal in probability. And there is a different, wait a minute, let me tell you. Probability is birth out of what has been repeatedly done before which makes the situation ripe for it happening again but with possibility it has the potential to being a new occurrence not being limited to past occurrences for example generational curses are probable but general blessings are possible because all it takes is one somebody in the family to step from what has been done into the potential of what can be done. Oh, bless your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's possible. It's possible for me and my child to break the curse on our family. It's possible for me and my child to go beyond expectations. 
salvation. It's possible for me and my child to live free because our possibilities are in the power of our God. I heard him say, behold, I do a new thing. Oh, I wish I had somebody in here that's ready for a new thing. Everybody in the family has been a victim of the curse, but God will allow you to birth somebody who's going to be the curse breaker in your family. Oh, I know, I know maybe that's too heavy for a Sunday morning, but high five your neighbor and say, neighbor, he's breaking some stuff. Oh, my child, he's already shown me. He's already called me that he's going to be the curse breaker. here in the text that we find this truth because here in the text we look at the mother of Moses and we look at the odds being stacked against her let me tell you a little bit about Moses' mother she was born into slavery, being a Hebrew in Egypt. She married into controversy, not by her own volition, because women in her day didn't have a say about their own lives. And she was made to marry her nephew. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Don't y'all start looking down your religious noses at, 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 at Jochebed here. Because there's some stuff happening in your family. She was made to marry her nephew. Now, that's her story. But can I tell you that many mothers were born into situations and placed into situations where the odds were stacked against them too. Some were born in abusive situations. Some were placed in uncompromising situations. Some were demeaned mentally and physically and the odds of them and their child making it was not in their favor. But tell your neighbor it's it's not your fault. It's not your fault. What you were born into is not your fault. Some of what you had to deal with in your life is not your fault. And some of what you have endured in your life is not your fault. But know this. Favor has nothing to do with your fault. Glory be to God. Oh, I wish I had somebody in here that even when it was your fault, favor was still on your life. Oh, I wish I had about 15 of y'all that would just high five your neighbor and say neighbor favor ain't got nothing to do with blame favor ain't got nothing to do with fault because the favor of God will override your fault and place you in the realm of possibility and make your situation a stepping stone into his favor on your life oh I wish I had somebody in here that could get this message from God oh the devil wants to keep you in your your past and the devil wants to keep you in your fault and the devil wants to say it's your fault but tell the devil he is a lie I was born into this but I ain't gonna stay in this because God has given me a way of escape I wish I had some, some mothers in here that would just hug another mother and say baby we coming out of this I know it ain't your fault you didn't put yourself in it but we coming out her name was Jochebed and in the midst of the odds being stacked against her they were also stacked against her youngest son Moses because the reigning Pharaoh of the time had made a decree he told the midwives to kill all of the male Hebrew children 
The decree was that while the mothers were on the birthing stool, and once you determine that the child is male, kill him. But some of the midwives refused to do what Pharaoh said because they feared God more than they feared Pharaoh. Oh God, and they kept some of the male children alive. Ah, uh, can you see God in this? Some, to keep alive what the devil is trying to kill. Oh, y'all missed it right there. God will keep alive what the devil is trying to kill. Can I tell you, he still does it. When the enemy was trying to kill your child, God kept them alive. When the enemy was trying to kill your relationship, with your child God kept it alive when the enemy was trying to kill your peace your joy your faith God kept it alive oh can I tell you from a kid that God kept alive because of my mother God kept it alive when I was trying to go to hell God kept me alive when I did things to myself that would have put me in the grave I had a mother praying interceding and God honored her prayer and kept me alive I wonder are there any kids in here that you are the product of a mother's prayer. You're the product of a mother's faith. You're the product of a mother's tenacity. Bless your neighbor and say, neighbor, the devil can't kill what God wants to live. Oh God, I, no matter what the ask are, if God says live, the devil can't kill it. No matter how bad it looks, if God says the devil, if God said it, the devil can't kill it. No matter what the enemy says, if God says live, the devil can't kill because God is life and God is truth. And whatever he says, God, to come to pass oh God so now Jochebed gives birth to her third child but to her second son Ooh, I feel God uh, you got to watch that second son uh, Adam was the first son but Jesus was the second son. And it was the second son that God saved our soul with. Uh, this is why Moses is considered a type of Christ because as the second son, he had a first anointing. Oh God, I, I felt that right there. Uh, how many second sons do we have in here? I stopped by to tell you, you might be the second son, but you got a first anointing to bring your family out of bondage to bring your children out of bondage to bring everything that the enemy is trying to do out of bondage now I don't know if Jochebed knew this but I do know that the Hebrews named their children based on what God would do in their lives and she named them Moses which means pull out or draw out oh God let me slow it down to pull out or draw out. Oh, God. And it was God that used Moses to draw out Israel out of Egypt. Oh, God. I wish I had somebody in here. Oh, mothers. Do you not know that there's a purpose on your child's life? There is a calling on your child's life. Oh, it may not be to preach, but he's been called to do something that the world has never seen before. I wish I had about 15 mothers that would just go into a crazy praise over the destiny of your child. I know it may not look like it right now. I know it may not seem like it right now. But God said, if you train him up the way he should go, when he's old, he will not depart. But after giving birth, she hides the child for three months. 
because of the decree, for three months, all the protection she could offer her child was herself. Oh, God. Are there any mothers in here that for a season, the only protection you could offer your child was you. <laughs> oh, God. You didn't get no help from social organizations. You didn't get no help from government organizations. You didn't get no help from societal organizations. All you could offer your child was yourself. All you had was your love. All you had was your care. All you had was your devotion to your child. But I need to tell a mother all you had is what God needs. Oh, yeah, because God needed you to work that miracle in that child's life. God needed you to turn the table. God needed you to perform that miracle because there comes a time in every mother's life that they have to let go and let God. Oh, God, I feel your presence. Oh, I'm going to have, oh, I'm going to give him glory all by myself. And the Bible says that when she could not no longer hide him, she made an ark of bulrushes, daubed it with slime and pitch, making a bed for her child. She bit the child in the ark and placed him in the flags by the bank of the river. Oh, God. Oh, wait a minute. Don't think that she was giving up. She was just the opposite. The Bible says she couldn't watch him, but she still couldn't watch him. But by faith, she let God watch him. Oh, God. Oh, God. She was wasn't giving up on him. She was giving him over to God. Ah, oh, this wasn't the act of desperation. This was an act of faith. Ah, oh, mother, tell somebody. It's not desperation, baby. It's faith. I ain't giving up on you. I'm just turning you over to God. Oh, yeah. I've been fussing and I've been cussing and I've been ranting and raving. But to come to a time, I've done all that I can do. Now I'm turning you over to God. Oh, I'm speaking out of faith. I'm acting out of faith. I'm operating in faith. Now tell them by faith, put them in the hands of your God. It doesn't matter how old they are. Put them in the hands of God. It don't matter how young they are. Put them in the hands of God. It doesn't matter the odds. Place them in the hands of God. I need about 15 mothers that have put every one of your children in the hand of God to high five another mother and say God gonna do it. He gonna watch over them. He gonna protect them. He's gonna raise them. He's gonna prosper them. He's gonna heal them. He's gonna deliver them. He's gonna save them. I'm turning it over and putting them in the hand of God. Now you put them in insurance and you put them in college. You put them in houses and you put them in cars. But now it's time for you to put them in the hands of God because what the insurance won't insure, what the college can't teach, what the car can't take them and the house cannot shelter them, God can. I wonder, is there a mother in here that said where I stopped there, God started when they moved on me and I can't see them but I know they're being watched I had to turn them over to the hands of God and can I tell a mother quit pacing the floor and put them in the hand of your God quit fussing and cussing cussing and fussing and arguing but put them in the hand of God. Quit fighting them and start trusting God. 
God and place them in the hand of God because when the odds are stacked against you the odds are not stacked against your God and what do you can do God can and God will show you his power I feel like preaching the Bible says uh, that Pharaoh's uh, daughter uh, goes to the river uh, to bathe. Ah, uh, that was God. Uh, and she bathed uh, at the place uh, where Jochebed uh, had placed Moses. Uh, that was God. Ah, uh, God. Uh, she sees the child uh, in the bulrushes. Uh, and about that time, uh, Moses saw crying. Uh, that was God. Uh, thank God. God places compassion for the child and he uses her to get the child back into the hands of his mother. I wish I had about 50 of y'all that would say God is putting my child back in my hands. I know there's been some distance. I know there's been a breach. I know there's been a separation. But I just believe that God is getting ready to put them back in my hands so I can love them, so I can squeeze them, so I can care about them. Oh, God, I stopped by to tell your Mother's Day that God is going to take you through some conflict that God going through some dark situations that God when you have stopped when you can do all that you can do God said it's my turn now I five a neighbor and say it's God's turn look at your children and say it's God's turn I sacrifice but it's God's turn now I did everything that I could do but it's God's turn now I pride to put clothes on your back but it's God's turn now I put food on the table but it's God's turn now and when you're in the hand of God you're in the best hands that you can be I come by to tell a mother just turn it over the odds are against you and what do you do you turn it over to a God who's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all. You can even ask a thing when the arms are stacked against you. Believe God. When the arms are stacked against you, turn it over to God. When the arms are stacked against you, keep your faith in God. Step out or pray Probability of your situation and step into the possibility of your faith where all things are possible. Well, let me tell you the rest of the story. The Bible, the Bible, the Bible, the Bible said that Joseph, he grew up in Pharaoh's house. But wait a minute, why? Did God have him grow up in Pharaoh's house because Jochebed could not pay for the education that he got in Pharaoh's house? Oh, mother, God will have your enemies pay for what God wants to do in your child line. Mm, the Bible said that he grew up he got favor with Pharaoh put him over some stuff but then one day the call of God came 
came on his life and when he saw an Egyptian abuse a Hebrew he killed him hit him in the sand and then he ran for his life but mother let me tell you while they're running you keep on praying while they're trying to get away keep on believing God the Bible says that one day on the backside of the desert the burning bush he looked at it he said why is this bush burning and the voice came out the bush and called him into his destiny now the Bible says that Moses he stepped into his destiny and he rose up went to Pharaoh and said I come in the name of the Lord and I heard him say let my people go and the children of Israel they left Egypt and went into the land of Canaan but can I tell you none of that would have been possible if Moses didn't have a mother that refused to give up if Moses did not have a mother that said no to the devil if Moses had not had a mother that said now ah can I go a little deeper mothers the life that you save for your children will be the same life that will save you y'all missed it right there because Moses when he came into power he brought his mama into his prosperity children let me tell you something if God prosper you don't you forget about your mama if God makes you a millionaire don't you forget about your mama if God gives you blessing you bless your mama if God opens doors to you you open doors for her because she was the one that when it all laws were stacked against you got you where you are now I wish I had somebody to say yeah. what she did not only bless her house but it blessed her nation oh y'all 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 missing it what God put in Jochebed with all of the odds being against her she gave birth to it and God blessed the nation okay can I tell you this your child right now don't look like the finished product you cannot go and look at a tree and curse the tree because it ain't furniture but I guarantee you if you stay with God whew, oh God God will make it make him make her what he wants them to be glory be to God but you got to stay on your knees mothers you got to stay on your face mothers arguing with their daddy ain't gonna get it done Ooh, I felt that myself you cannot augur a blessing on your child not the kind of blessing that child needs Glory be to God. A 
I said, God, what do you want me to tell the women? What do you want me to tell the mothers? He said, tell them, I know the odds are stacked against them. But I'm the equalizer. Glory be to God. I'm the equalizer. I'm the one that even though the odds are stacked against them, I can still come through for them. Just by show of hands, real quick, how many of you know that you're here because you had a mother or a mother-like figure in your life that wouldn't give up on you? I'm I can't do it now. But I remember before my mom got sick, she and I was talking and I told her, I said, Mama, can I tell you something? She said, baby, what is it? I said, thank you for not giving up on me. And here's what my mother says. She said, baby, listen. I couldn't give up on you because I believe in God too much and I believe in you too much. And I know that God in your life was going to bring forth what God wanted for your life. She said, I'm just glad you're my son. Listen, I don't know. I don't know. I know some of you, some of you may not have had a mother like that. Some of you may have had mothers that you had issues with. But listen, can I tell you, she's gone now, but I wish I could just hold her one more time. I wish I could just talk to her one more time but 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 minister douglas hear what god told me you can still talk to her you can still hold her in your heart you you can still and i want to tell everybody where well, you can't physically touch your mama you can touch her in the spirit because when the odds were stacked against y'all i remember I remember, y'all, please bear with me. I remember my mother said, I'm going to take you to church. And I said, Mom, you know, there were times that my dad, we didn't have but one car. I'm sorry for all of you two-car households and don't know nothing about having one car. My dad would be gone in the car. And my mother said, come on, let's go to church. I said, Mom, how are we going to get there? She said, baby, we're going to walk. And I said, Mom, wait a minute. Why, why are we going to walk? Because as a kid, that's embarrassing to be walking down the street in your neighborhood. My mother said, I got to take you. So as a little boy, she would grab my hand and we'd walk all the way to church. After church, we would have to ask people to break us home. My mom would tell me, she said, God got great plans for you. I didn't see it. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't even want to hear it around parks. I said, Mama, look, I got plans for my own life. And I remember when I called her, and God called me into the ministry. I called her. I said, Mama, I got something to tell you. I said, God called me into the ministry. She said, I know. 
I knew it when I was walking you to church. I, I knew it when I was taking you to every meeting in the church. I knew it. And son, even though the odds were against us, how many of you know, listen, listen, I should have been a statistic. But God, she said that the odds were against us, honey, but that's okay. We made it. And it looks like all the, all the successes that I had had, all the little awards and the achievements that I had made, nothing made her more happier than when I stepped in my calling. She said, because that's what... She said, you got through the... Uh, the odds being stacked against you in the generational curses of alcohol on the family. Well, you, 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 God took you through that. The generational curses of, 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 of infidelity in the family. But you've been with one woman for 40 years. God said, all of the stuff that the enemy put on the family. Oh, my God. I prayed it off of you. I sacrificed it off of you. I, God rewarded my faithfulness in your life. Children, let me tell you something. Don't take your mother for granted. No, no, no. I'm not saying that because, because mine is gone. I'm telling you that even if yours is here, don't take her for granted. Because she's done some praying that you didn't even know. She's made sacrifices that you can even never phantom. God has blessed you. And somebody said, well, well, Pastor, my mother wasn't like that. But look in your life and see who he has placed in that position. In your life. Can we give God a praise for our mothers and those mother-like figures in our life? Oh, no, no, no. I mean, I mean a grateful praise. I mean a praise like, Mama, thank you, Mama. Mama, oh, God bless you. No, 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 no. She, she may not have gave you birth, but you thank God. Mothers, young mothers, please. raise that child not to be a child I'm going to let that marinate raise that child so that God can use that child And I know it's not popular to take your kids to church. I know it's not popular to correct your children. I know it's not popular to rebuke your children. I know it's not popular. Listen, I get it. I get it. I do. Well, I'm not going to do to my child what was done to me. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. But do to your child what God wants you to do to your child. Because that's when the favor of God will be on them. Glory be to God. Listen, if you're here today and you don't know Christ the Savior, you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord, I want to invite you today to give him your heart, to give him your life.
If you've never asked God, never asked Jesus to come into your life, and right now you're sitting wherever you are, whether you're in the sanctuary or whether you are streaming with us this morning, and you're feeling something in your spirit that's saying, I need this relationship. If you're in person, I want you to come. These ministers are here to help lead you to him. But if you're streaming today and you say, well, Pastor Ross, I, 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 I hear because when I look back over my life and when I look back and I think about how God used people in my life to, to help me and help me to get where I am, I realize I owe him my life. And I want to give him my life. I want to turn my life over to him. If I'm talking to you, I want you to repeat, repeat this prayer with me. Father, I come believing that Jesus is your son. I come believing your word. And I confess that he is the Lord. I confess that he is Savior. And I confess that his blood has the power to wash me and cleanse me spiritually. Jesus, I open the door to my heart. Open the door to my life. And I ask you to come in right now change me form me mold me make me into what you created me to be I receive you now in my life and I thank you in Jesus name I pray listen if you prayed that with me congratulations you are saved now, it's very important, very, very important that no matter where you are in the continental United States, wherever you are streaming with us this morning, listen, it's very important that you find a church, not just any church, but find a church that teaches you the word of God, preaches the word of God to you, and there is an example of godliness in the leadership of that church glory be to God now I want you to know that everybody ain't perfect in a church that's the reason why the church is still here but know that God God has to be in operation at that church and when you find that church that church is going to help you grow spiritually and help you grow in that relationship that you just got into with Christ glory be to God now, if you're in the Waco area, if you're in the Robinson area, if you're in the Hewitt area, matter of fact, Colleen Temple, okay, Dallas, Fort Worth, glory be to God, Houston, Abilene, it don't matter. We can make it happen. If God is leading you to become a member partner of this church, glory be to God, right there in that comment box, go ahead give us your name and a contact number and we can make that happen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I want to end by the spirit of, by the leading of the spirit. I want to end this service with prayer for mothers. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Oh, we got time, y'all. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah.
Can I get somebody to just go into a praise right now? My life, my life you, you have, have been, been so, so good. With, with every, every breath that, that I, I am able. Yes, God. Oh, I'm going to see all the goodness of God. Yes, God. the goodness of God. Oh, I'm going to see. Oh, I'm going to see of the goodness of God. Oh, I'm going to see of the goodness of God. While they're ministering all my life, Somebody think about it this morning. All my life you have been so, so good. Yes, God. With every breath that, that I, I have. am able. Mm. Oh, I'm going to sing of the goodness of God. I'm the goodness of God. I'm going to ask all mothers to please come. Glory be to God. All mothers, please come to the altar. Again, you don't have to be biological mother. I'm the goodness of God. I'm going to sing. Of the goodness of God, oh, I'm going to sing of the goodness of God. Jesus. I'm going to sing of the goodness of God. Father God, I pray that you would look upon this altar. See your daughters. See those that you have anointed to be mothers. And Father, I pray, Father, I pray, God, that you, by your spirit and by your power, touch each one of them at the very point of their need Father, you know what they got on the altar. You know what they are believing you for. You know their most intimate prayers. 
Father God, you know what they're going through with their children. You know where their heart is. You know where their mind is. And you have not lost them in the spirit. And Father, I call on you on their behalf. And I intercede right now for my sisters, God. That you would meet everyone. Their needs so many, God. But meet every one of their needs, God. The devil is trying his best to drive them into doubt and fear. But Father, we come in the name of Jesus and we resist him right now in the name of Jesus. Oh God, build their faith, God. Fortify this relationship that they have with you, God. Peace for the mind. Strength for the spirit. Strength for the body, God. In the name of Jesus. Reward their faithfulness. Lord, I pray for every child of theirs that's sick. Give them healing for the sickness, God. I pray for every child who is confused and, and, and lost their way. Bring them back, Father God. Pray for every situation that does not line up with what you have shown them, God. But Father, we thank you that you're turning it around right now. Oh, we thank you that you're turning it around right now. We thank you that you're turning it around right now, God. Oh, God, I pray right now. I thank you, Father God, for the ministers that they're raising. I thank you, Father God, for the head of corporations that they're raising. I thank you, Father God, for the great people that they are raising. I thank you for the successful people that they are raising right now, God. And give them the wisdom and the knowledge, Father. And we declare that it shall come to pass in the name of Jesus. Bless them. Woo. Bless them. 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 Hey, bless them, God. With blessings, bless them. With power, bless them. With strength, bless them. By your spirit, bless them. In the name of Jesus, now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, and who present us faultless before his throne with exceeding great joy. To the only wise God be dominion, power, and glory in his forth now and forever. We declare amen and amen. Mothers, go ahead, hug each other. And tell them it's turning right now. It's turning right now. It's turning right now. I don't know what you need, but it's turning right. Glory be to God.